This gave me an idea about the video today. Hey there, this is Animation. In this video, I've got two amazing and awesome tricks up my virtual sleeve about the spot removal tool in Lightroom. Now here's the thing. The biggest problem is not removing the spot. With advanced computational algorithms and all that math stuff, it's easier than ever. Even a child can do it straight out of the womb, just dib and dab and smash. What difficult is, it is finding the spot. Whenever you import your images into Lightroom or Photoshop, you barely see the spots. Most of them are hidden, faded or zombie-ish, you just cannot see them. But when you edit it, when you apply something high contrast effect or when you increase the clarity or especially when you do HDR processing, your image still looks good when you've edited it. But go and grab a cup of coffee. Go and have a nap and come back after a while, you'll find that the spots are killing it. And that's happening when you've completed editing your image, when you have processed the JPEG. And at that time, it's going to be very slow for you, very difficult for you to remove the spot. Yes, you can do it, but it's better to remove them first and find out where the spots are. Moreover, suppose you gave your image for print and you cannot see the spots because they are so small and so undistinguishable that you gave it for print. and especially for a client and when the client receives that and when you gift it to somebody, they would say, oh, Mish, there's a lot of spots in this image. Now you cannot say, oh, that's the printer's fault, that's the ink's fault, that's the technical difficulty out there. You cannot say that, you cannot play the blame game. So let's not play the blame game and let's get started. So I've got two amazing, hot, new, spicy tricks. The one is very important, the other is a bonus. So without any further ado, let's hit it. So here we are in Lightroom and as you can see, I have opened a processed image and this is looking terrible. Why? Because look at the spots, my friend. Look at the spots, so many spots and these are so distracting. Look at the spots right here. Look at the spots right here. These are not even visible. The thing is, when you print it or when you're gonna be uh, give it for online submission and stuff like that, this is gonna be so much more than visible. And I promise I didn't see them coming when I was importing the images. When I imported it straight out of the camera, I couldn't see the spots. Let me show you the before image. So this is the before. Can you see the spots? These are so faded right now. You cannot even see this spot, which was right here. These spots are totally almost invisible. So let's bring back the processed image. Now the thing is, your first step should be finding the spots and removing them when you import the image. You can do it halfway through your editing, but make sure you do it before exporting the image. So, how to find this spot? There's a secret tool in Lightroom called Visualize Spots. I'll talk about it in a minute, but here's the thing. The spot removal tool in Lightroom is very CPU intensive. When you import the image and when you apply a lot of spot removal tool and when you further edit the image, your processes is going to be a bit laggy, a bit slow. Why? Because this is very CPU intensive. This eats up a lot of RAM. So you might consider doing it just before exporting the image. Just before exporting the image from Lightroom, not Photoshop. Just before exporting the images from Lightroom. Okay, do that before that so that it saves you time. If you do it first hand, if your CPU is fast, you should do it first hand technically and logically. But if your CPU is not that fast and you've got a slow computer, consider doing it just before exporting. Why? Because this is very CPU intensive and it eats up a lot of RAM. So that's that. So let's jump into a secret tool called Visualize Spots. So how do I see the spots? So let's, I'll just move into a process JPEG. Why? Because this is going to be fast because I've used a lot of adjustment brushes in there and the process can be laggy and you guys can get bored. But I insist you do that just before exporting. Okay. So in your raw images, okay. So I open the spot removal too. Now, there's a tiny checkbox beside visualize spots. Just check it. And this shows you where are the spots in your photos. Watch, as I move the slider, the spots become more and more visible. Now what is this? Well, for most of us, all we need to know is just a black and white strange image that helps you find out where the spots are. But for the technical geeks like me, it's just a representation of changes. 
Whenever a tone, a color, a brightness, luminosity, saturation, light changes drastically, that area becomes white. And when the change is not that much, when the change is very gradual, that area becomes black. As you can see in the sky, the sky is seamless. It's complete in black. But in these areas, there's a lot of texture and things are changing very fast. So this is just a representation of changes in tones. So that's it. Now, uh, select the spot healing brush tool, okay? Make sure this is checked. Move it to a value that where you can see all your spots but not too much of background noise. Then make the spot removal tool a little bit bigger, okay? To make it bigger, you can just scroll on your mouse Right? And if you don't have a mouse, if you're using a trackpad, you can also increase the size or decrease the size right from here. And once you're satisfied with the size, you just click on it and boom. But it's not gone. It's not gone. It's sampling from, from another spot. Let's zoom it in. It's sampling sam sample from here. What happened? It's taking the wrong area as a sample. Now here comes the second tip. The second tip is also very exciting. I'm, I'm very glad that this happened. Whenever something like this happens, instead of just moving the sample around to a place where you might like it, all you have to do, let's go back, Control Z or Command Z if you're using a Mac, press, listen, this, listen to this very carefully, press the forward slash key. And when you press the forward slash key, watch what happens. This takes a totally new sample automatically. And if you're even not satisfied with this sample, press it again. This takes another sample. Press it again. This take, takes another sample unless you're satisfied. And suppose I'm satisfied with this. Okay, done. Okay, I'll click it again. It's done. It's gone. Now, one or more things that you might be concerned about is that whenever you select a tool and you click it, it applies the tool. But what if I want to zoom in when I've selected a tool like adjustment brush tool or radial tool, any other tool? Because when you select a tool and you click it, the tool applies. But when you have not selected a tool and you click it, it zooms. So you want to zoom with the tool selected. How do you do that? Here's the thing. Press and hold the space bar. Watch the cursor. It has changed it into a change itself into a magnifying glass. Click again now. It zooms in and when your zooming is done, leave the space bar. Interesting? Yep, it is. Now let's remove this spot, okay? Remove this, remove this, remove this. Okay, didn't didn't quite happen. Okay, so we need to press forward slash. Okay, done. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Remove this, remove this, gone. Okay, let's zoom it back out, right? Gone. We can also go ahead and remove this if we want. Okay, it's gone. You can also paint with it instead of just clicking. You can also paint with it if there's an object that's not around. So remove, you can paint with it or you can make the brush a little bit bigger and do that. And suppose, okay, we are done with it most probably. But here's, the, uh, here's another tip. These spots are the result of dust in your camera sensor. But there are other kinds of spots which you might want to remove. Suppose there's something in the scene, maybe dirt in the water which you want to remove, that can also be considered as spot because that too is a distraction. So as you can see here, let me check visualize spots and here are a few spots that I might want to remove. Let me check it out. Yes, these spots. Because when you give a huge print, when you make it a desktop wallpaper, these become very distracting. So you can click it again and you can make the brush a little bigger and you can remove it one by one. Just click it, click it, click it. And whenever you're not satisfied with the replacement, whenever you're not satisfied with the re result, remember, press the forward slash key. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I promise I'll get back to you in a day or two or more. <laughs> but I'll get back to you, okay? I'll see you guys in my next video. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. And thank you so much for watching. But before I go, I want to give a tip to you. This is not related to Lightroom or Photoshop, but it's related to photography. I just wanted to give a tip because I just love to be in front of the camera. Okay, so the tip is about being in front of the camera. Not personality-wise or... I'm very bad at that, okay. The tip is, 
how to take a self portrait. Especially when you're taking your portrait, it's difficult to get yourself in focus. If you have a remote, then fine. You can just press the remote halfway down. You can focus your face that you can do. But what if you don't have a remote? And what if you're using a lens like 1.8 that has very shallow depth of field? What do you do? The trick is, place the tripod where you want to place the tripod, place the camera on it, stand where you want to stand, and make a composition how you will be standing, how, you, how your camera will be, decide everything beforehand, okay? Now comes the difficult part, now comes the tricky and amazing part. Take your camera off the tripod, don't move the tripod, okay? Don't move the tripod at all. Take your camera off the tripod, stand where you will be standing, take your camera in your hand and focus the tripod. Now place your camera back into the tripod, stand where you're standing, set a timer and click your photo. This works, why? Because the distance from you to your tripod is the same distance from the tripod to you. And you get the idea what I'm talking about. Okay, so hope that helped. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, peace. Right, it's better to fix that up previously in Lightroom. So without any further ado, let's get started. But before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future.